let's have a look at the first view. Okay, so uh, remember multiple choice is quite a big section of the paper. Um, just looking at this, you can see in terms of mark allocation, 30, 40. Yeah. Okay, so 40 out of 70 for multiple choice, that's more than half. Um, so you can actually pass the exam just, just with multiple choice, but you want to do well, and obviously the long questions will be part of the um, exam paper where you'll actually have to write answers and submit it. Uh, they do give you space to answer on the actual question paper. Um, here we've got financial statements and analysis, so that's ratios, and then you've got share valuation. Right, so generally those questions take quite easy to answer as well. So depending on you, um, we've seen before that multiple choice takes a lot of time. Um, so just plan and manage your time appropriately in the exam because you don't want to use all the time um, and then you don't have time to do the easier yeah. questions. Okay, because these actually aren't that bad. You'll see 19 marks, 11 marks just for doing a few workings. Um, so that's just a little note about um, time management, okay, exam technique. Uh, just split your time so maybe use an hour for multiple choice mcq okay and say well after the hour maybe i get up to question there's 40 here maybe i get up to question 25 okay then stop and just go and try do those ones um just so that you have enough time to yeah. complete it because 30 marks doesn't seem a lot but it is quite a bit um, if you're looking at the whole paper okay Right, so I'm just going to start with multiple choice and just go through it normally. Yeah. Okay, so MCQ. Okay, question one. All right, question one is theory. Which one of the funding statements about financial markets and securities is true? Right, a debt instrument is long term if its maturity is 10 years or longer. Okay, so if we're looking at a debt instrument, debt is referring to liabilities, so bonds. Yeah. Okay, they're looking at long term and they talked about 10 years or longer. Debt instrument is intermediate uh, term if its maturity is less than one year. Okay, one year is very short. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely not intermediate. Yeah. The maturity of a debt instrument is the time that has elapsed since it was issued. Okay, that's mm -hmm. looking at maturity. Maturity is not the time that it's yeah. issued. A maturity is the, the last day of the like contract. Okay, so the bond will pay out in 20 years. Okay, so all the bond's term will be 20 years long. A bond is a long-term security that promises to make periodic payments called dividends. That's wrong. Okay, the periodic payments are coupons. Yeah. All right, so one is correct. Uh, actually, let's not do that because we might have to do workings. Okay, so question two. Which of the following is the best description of shareholder wealth? Okay, remember, shareholder wealth is looking at value. Yeah not profits right so the number of people employed in the firm no. no the amount of salaries paid by the firm's employees no the market price per share of the firm's ordinary shares that seems good yeah. okay the book value of the firm's assets less the book value of its liabilities right that would be net asset value okay so if we're looking at shareholder wealth shareholder wealth uh, a better measure of shareholder wealth would be the market price because what do those shareholders hold the equity in the business yeah. okay book value of the assets so assets minus liabilities would be net asset value okay net asset value is just the assets minus the liabilities right so three and four are good in terms of value considerations but because we look at shareholder wealth shareholders would want the value of the firm to increase yes. right so three okay number three says which one of the following statements is not correct regarding a sole proprietorship? Okay, so obviously okay. sole proprietors yeah. are businesses that have one owner, right? Yeah. Okay, so sole proprietors are self-employed, correct. So, uh, sole proprietors are not permitted to take That's on employees. True. That's false. Yeah, you yeah. can employ people if you want to. Yeah. Okay, sole proprietors are personally liable for all the That's debts um, and liabilities. Definitely, okay, because it's the owner's debt yes. it's the owner's liability sole proprietors own all the assets of the business and are entitled to all the profits That's definitely true. So okay it's so two. obviously two okay um n is interested in purchasing e's house since n is a poor negotiator she hires m to negotiate a purchase price identify the parties of this transaction 
right so um, in is actually purchasing E's house so in wants to buy E's house yeah okay um, N is a poor negotiator so she hires M all right to do the negotiation okay so obviously M, so M is, is an, an agent, agent. Yeah. correct so M is an agent and N is the principal that would be right yeah. too Right, number five. Okay, now we've got the start of time yeah. value of money. Kyle has been offered an investment that will pay him. Oh, you got your calculator. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay, that will pay him 8%. So remember, exam technique. I've got this paper in the exam. So what would I do? I would write on it. Yeah. Okay, so for me, just to save time, I wouldn't be writing this down separately. I'm going to do it now just so you have the answers yeah. and I can send it to you. But all I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be identifying values. So 8%, I compound quarterly so i know I this is four. i4 mm -hmm. so i write that down and i write eight divided by two uh no eight divided by four yeah. quarters right so i'm just going to keep track of this time value of money i4 equals eight percent divided by four which is two percent per quarter yeah right if he invests fifteen thousand then i just write down pv That's pv He's investing 15000 How long will it be until... That's future value. He will have, yes, future value. So, so we're working out? N. Exactly. Okay, so future value equals... 30000 30, So he's basically doubling his money, and they want you to solve for N. N. Okay, type that into your calculator, and let's see what you get. P, so P, I is 8... Did you get the same answer? Let's check. I, I, was, I needed just to put it as a negative, mm -hmm. the PV. Okay. So 35.00. Correct. But yeah. remember, this was in quarters. So the N that you get is in quarters. Right. But they asked you for years. So you divide by four. Yes. Good. Okay. Divide by four. So it's 8.75. Good, yes. 8.75, option four. Okay, let's go six. Empire is trying to sell you an investment policy that will pay you 75,000 per year indefinitely. When you see the word indefinitely, it's perpetuity. It means it doesn't end. Okay. All right, so PV equals the payment PMT over the I. Okay, it's Gordon growth without growth, right, because it's forever. Okay, so it's basically a um, perpetuity. That's what this is actually looking at. Okay, so perpetuity PV equals PMT divided by I. That's the formula for a perpetuity. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the PMT, required return on the investment, 20%. That's so the I, I is 0, comma, two zero. How much will you pay for the policy? So right. is that the so PV or the FE? That's the PV. There okay. is no FE okay. here. Okay, so uh, what is the amount now? I forget. 20, 20, 75 divided by 0 0.20 equals. Okay, that you can type into your calculator. So 75,000 divided by... You have to point. put 0.25. Okay. Remember, if it's a formula, you put in decimals. I got 30... 300. 375,000, yeah. Yes, option three. Okay, this is last year's paper. Not too bad, eh? No, so not far. Okay. Winter has just made her first 16,000 contribution to an individual retirement account. First means... Um, the PV. first of maybe several, yeah. depending on what we have. 
if she earns a rate of 9% compounded quarterly, so that's divided by 4, I4, and makes no additional contributions. Okay, she makes no additional contributions. Yeah. So that's your PV. Yeah. What will her account be worth when she retires in 55 years? So we need to look okay. for the FB. 55 years, yes. Okay, but remember we need to keep everything the same. Alright, so let's put in the PV. The PV was 16,000. Okay. The I was I4, hey? Yeah. I4 was equal to 9% compounded quarterly. It's 9 divided by 4. 9% divided by 4 equals... 2.25. Oh. 9 divided by 4... It's it's 2.25. Okay, now, now it's doing that. Okay, 2.25% per quarter. Okay, so that's the rate. Then you yeah. need a time. 55. Okay, but remember, how old is she now? Um. Oh, okay, that actually doesn't matter. Yeah. It retires in 55 years. Not retires when she's 55 yeah. years old. Okay, so she could be 20 or well, 30 or, or whatever, yeah. Okay, so um, in here, 55 years, but you can't use 55 years. You have to divide a uh, times it by 4. Yes, because there, there are 4 quarters in every year. So 55 times 4 Can is 220 use? quarters. Right, then you solve for... FV, and let's see what we get. Okay, so future value, the rate was 9% divided by 4. The N was that. The payment, 0. I don't think I put the payment in. Okay, I did. I did it, yeah. So that was that. That's fine. Payment is 0. And the PV is 16. Okay, did you get that answer? Yep. Okay, so two, one, three, three eight. eight. There we go. Six. Option three. It's actually very straightforward. Yes. So okay, because it's calculator work in theory. Yeah. Okay, so as long as you've studied your theory, you'll be okay with those simpler questions. Yeah. Right, and then as long as you've been practicing using the calculator, these, these should be quite easy. Yeah. Okay, remember, TVM, time value money, is very, very yeah. Important, okay, in terms of a skill when looking at FIN 2601. Okay, if you yeah. can't use the calculator, you're not going to do well. Okay, but you're doing well, you, you're knowing you know how to work these out, so that's quite good. Okay, Travis wants to invest monthly. Okay, that'll accumulate to that. So, so we need to work out a PMC. Accumulate, accumulate means a future value. Correct. After eight years, and so the end. in. How much must be deposited each month if yeah, his bank offers him a PMC. rate of 10% per annum compounded monthly? Divided by 12. There we go. Okay, and good. we have to work up the PMC. Yeah, I12, 10% divided by 12. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Future value, 900,000. FV, 900,000. Uh, what else? N, 8 years. So N equals 8 years. Am I going to use 8 years? Um, eight times, eight times, um, is it twelve? Yeah. yeah, how many months in a year? Yeah. Twelve. Okay. Okay, so, solve for what? PMC. Correct. Okay, was this beginning or end? They don't say. They just yeah. said how much is it to deposit. So, you can the assume end. The is the first one. Okay. Number one. Yeah, let's check it, just to make sure. Okay, so you've already got an option. The payment... The rate was 10% divided by 12. The N, 96 months. The PV, no PV. FE, um, 900,000. Okay, so yeah, 6156, mm -hmm. number one is correct. Do we have to clear every time we yes. do that? That's the only thing. Okay. Because you don't want to keep stuff in the yeah. memory when you're starting a new question. Okay. Jasmine borrowed 120000 this morning. Okay. That's PV. She is going to repay the loan by making equal payments for six years. That's it. Yeah. 
the interest rate on the loan is 15% per year, so that's I1. How much interest will she pay over the life of the loan? Okay, so this is amortization. Okay, because now we're looking at her um, total interest paid over the period. Alright, so we need to insert everything. Jasmine borrowed, so PV equals 120. Okay, let's insert all the values we identified. Um, how many years? Six years. So N equals six. And they gave us the I, one, which is the yearly rate, 15%. Solve for PMT. Okay, obviously, if I'm paying off a loan, the future value is zero, right? Yeah. So you're going to solve for the payment first okay. because you need to know what the payments are for this loan. Um, 31708 Yes, okay, that's the payment. That's the All right, then you press AMRT, Amort. Right, and then Amort gives you those values. Yeah. So uh, you need to make PM1. Zero. No, yeah, PM1 is, yeah. needs to be one because okay. that's the first period. And then PM2 needs to be the end, which is six. Okay. Okay. I've never done a um, because we look at the sum. Never done this before. Yeah, because we look at the sum of all the interest. Okay. And then scroll all the way down. To let's just keep going. You're looking for the sum of the interest. There, there. See sum that fancy mathematical oh, okay. symbol. I must have said sum, sum of interest. Yeah. What do you see on the screen? Um, seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty. Uh, set it slower. Seventy. Seven. Seventy thousand. 250.57 um, Okay, is that there? No She borrowed that this morning She's going to repay the loan by making equal payments for 6 years The interest rate on the loan is 15 How much interest will she pay over the life of the loan? Yeah, that's the sum of interest Okay, let's do it lo uh, the long way If I create the table Amortization <coughs> table Because then we can check if the memo is right or wrong Okay, so I've got the year, I've got the principal, I've got the interest, I've got the payments, and I've got the balance. Okay, so how many years? Six. Six years. Okay, so the principal, 120,000, right? Yes. Yes, okay, it's 15% per year, so the rate is 15%. Okay, so let's just write that down, 0.15. Okay, so the interest on that for all of them. would be, yeah, uh, would be this multiplied by Six. principal. Okay, uh, the payment equals, that's the payment. Make sense? Okay, so the balance will be the principal plus the interest minus the payment. Okay, and then this be the balance that I'll carry down and then I just copy that and then I copy all of that uh, this needs to be fixed uh, we need to fix that okay all right so does that work out um, that's the principal that's the interest 15% that's the payment. Oh, minus, not plus. What am I doing here? Um, I'm adding. Let's just check. Principal plus interest minus no, balance. Minusing. That is yeah. right. I am minusing. Okay. Oh, that should be 15% times that. What's E42? E42 is this. Yeah, so 15% of the principal. Why is this amount bigger? Oh, there we go. It's a minus, not a plus. I need to change this. Sorry. <coughs> minus here. Okay, then that works out. There we go. Okay. It's just the sign. Okay, that needed to be a plus. Okay, because I'm subtracting the payments. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can see there. Amortization. 
zero future value. Why? You're paying off the loan. All right, so the question is saying, what is the sum of the interest? Okay, so equals sum up that. Yes, there's nothing wrong with the answer. Yeah. The memo's wrong. Okay, so how much interest do you pay over the loan? That's how much yeah. I pay. See, there's the interest. Okay, so for this one. So they have to give us the money. How much interest will she pay over the life? of the loan the answer is that so kay. they have to give us the mark because they're wrong they're wrong but yeah. i don't know who would who would fix this yeah that's the big thing okay uh, this this question's incorrect so and they don't give us errata in the exam they don't errata, say errata. um question incorrect okay and then they would just look at my workings here yeah. basically what we've done okay that's the working that's the amortization table Okay, you can't change that. Yeah. That's the amount of interest you pay over the life of the loan. Okay. All right. So they would have to fix this. Um, the answer would be that. So yeah. Write the answer there. Okay. All right. That's that one. Ten. Okay, uh, Nyla enters into a three-year property lease agreement that requires payments of that at the beginning. There's, that's important, yeah. begin mode. That's the first one where we need to change the mode. Okay, that's the payment, PMT. If the interest rate is 7% compounded monthly. So that's divided by 12? Yeah, so I12 is 7% divided by 12. Mm -hmm. What is the current cash value of the lease? So they want to so work out the PV. Oh, current, current value. Sorry. Current yeah, cash PB. value. Right, so uh, we've got the PMT. We need an N though. Um, there. Naila enters into a three-year property lease agreement that requires payments so in, um, at the beginning three. of every year. So, so it's three times 12. Three years, yeah. So N would be three, three times, times 12, 12, which is 36 months. And then the I is seven divided by solve 4. Solve for PV. So PV we need to solve. So PMT is 4.4. Four. Okay, the rates. And the SB you don't have. N is 36. Payment is 44, 4404. What did you I've get? I've got 143, 461. Uh, oh, begin mode. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I so did begin mode, yeah. That's right. So yours is right. Uh, let's just check. I think type is begin mode. Let's just see. Zero. I think type I have to put in one then. Oh, uh, there's a minus there. Same answer. Mm, yeah, that just rounded off. Yeah, it is the same answer. Yes. Okay. okay so that's just rounded off. Uh, but your PV would be that. Yeah. One four three. Yeah, it's that one. One four three four. This one. Yeah. Oh, but see, their numbers is not. Yeah. Close. So what they did, yours rounded off. Mine just rounded it to that. Yeah, but but the correct rounding would be would, this. Uh, yeah, it would. So Eunice's rounding is incorrect. Yeah. Well they should okay, do that it. one should have been a two. two. Okay, or they should have put nine nine there. Yeah. Okay, but it's fine. Two is the closest answer. Okay. All right, so we would choose two. Okay, number eleven. Your client. Aiden invests 800 at the end of each six month period. Okay. So that's divided by two. That's half years, right? So that's twice a year. Yeah, Do you agree? So divided by two. Semi annual periods. Yeah. Yeah. So the rates will be divided by two. Yeah. Correct. So that's the I. Uh, that's the N. The I is. That's the PMT. Divided by two. Okay, he can get an interest rate of 5% common SMA. What is the investment value will be in four years' time? So, so that's a future value. Future value question mark. Good. Okay, so PMT, you've got everything already. Let's just write down the values, the variables. So that's PMT 800. Okay, four years. So N equals four, but remember it's times two. Yeah. Four years is 
times 2 is 8 semi-annual periods. Okay, the I is I2. I got my mark back though. Okay, good. Uh, what did you get for this one? Uh, for the first Fun. assignment was 90% and the second was 95. Okay, good. So we yeah. can check which ones, because we had some uh, questions, remember, that mm. we raised. All right, but yeah, so that's good. Okay, so 5% divided by 2. Okay, so yeah, 2.5 cal. I won't write that in. We can work it out when we do the working on the calculator. Okay, that's it, eh? Solve for future value. So, Great. Okay. Mm. Right, so uh, let me just write that down. Solve for FV. Okay, so future value brackets. Um, okay, we'll check your answer. Divide by 2. Right, the N was 8 periods. The payment was 800. What did you say you got? 6,988. Correct. That's right. Uh, is that there? Yes. Yep. That's the exactly the same. Yes, option four. Okay, that one's good. Right, number twelve. Dynamics um, has just signed a contract to sell an asset for eighty three thousand. Twelve years from now. Twelve so years that's from value. now. Yes, means future value. Okay, twelve years in. The asset costs ten thousand to produce today. Good. At what interest rate will the break so even? Work out the the I exactly so good. Okay. Yeah. See, you've got the right technique. Yeah. You're just identifying values. Eighty-three thousand PV. Ten. Twelve years from now. I need to make this a negative. Good. See, you even know that. That's good. Okay, because the calculator gets confused. Yeah. Okay, let's put solve for the rate. I, uh, we need to work. N, I, and then N is 12. Payment, nothing. PV, negative 10, and 83. What I got 19.2. Well, you'll round it off. Uh, yeah, well, I'll put more. 0.28 yeah. is correct. 19.28, there, yeah. 29. Yeah. That's rounded off correctly. Yeah. Option one. Thirteen. You want to have a hundred thousand in twenty years. How much would you have to invest today? That's PV. At twenty eight percent compounded annually. Compounded annually. I won. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Right. Some of them are really easy. Some are a bit more tricky. Hundred thousand, hey. Um, FV. Yeah. Okay. In here they said was twenty years. And the I was 28%. And in here? Sorry. And you're solving for PV. 20 years for N. Solve for PV. Okay, so let's see what we get. PV. The rate, 0 0.28. The N, 20. The payment, 0. The future value. 100,000. Close brackets. That yep. one? Same, that's same one? Okay, 717.46. That's the one. Actually, really straightforward. You just need to put it directly into the calculator. Exactly, yeah. Okay. A uh, top footballer has been signed to a three year contract. 100,000. The player is to receive 40 at the end of the first year. Okay, that's the time value of money calculation. Um, so that's a cash. Yeah, that's cash flow. Correct. 40,000 there, 30,000 there, 30,000 there at the end of the last year. Assuming, so year one will be zero. Okay. 15% uh, will be your I. So and just then you two. solve for net present value. Okay, we're using the shortcuts. So one is going to be zero? Yes, always. Okay. Forty, thirty, thirty, and then I equals the ratio was fifteen percent discount rates. So I got solve for NPV. What did you get? I got seventy 
Yes. 
long term. Yeah. Right, non-current and current assets, but the focus is on assets. Quick ratio, yes, that looks at a short-term asset. The debt ratio, um, the debt ratio, let's just revise the theory. The debt ratio is that, total liability over total assets. There's the total assets, so that would also be correct, okay. managing assets. Times interest earned. Times interest earned, earnings before interest and tax over interest, that's not relating to assets, so that one would be out. Profit margin. Profit margin might even be there. Yeah, profit there. margin. But you have different profits. You have gross profit, operating profit, net profit. All of these are over sales because this is looking at operations. Yeah. Okay, nice. so that one's already out. Okay, the current, yes. A fixed charge coverage ratio, that's a strange ratio. You haven't looked at that one yet. It's not in the textbook. Okay. Okay, so that one's out. Debt ratio, yes. yes. Price earnings ratio, we need to go look at price earnings. Okay, there's price earnings. Market price over EPS, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, return on total asset, that would be yes. Okay, inventory turnover ratio. Inventory is a current asset, yes. Day sales outstanding. Day sales outstanding, current remember, current as well. day sales outstanding is looking at the um, debtors, right? Yeah. Uh, where's my, there, other one. This one, there, average collection, period. That's the day that are the sales are outstanding. Right, the trade receivables is current. That one's also good. Yeah. Fixed asset turnover, it's a fixed asset, definitely. Yeah. Right, four. Right. Okay, J and B each re recently reported the same earnings per share, EPS. However... J's ordinary shares trade at a higher price. Which of the following statements is most correct? All right, so they have the same okay. earnings per share, but the price is different. Okay. Right, so earnings per share and price. We need to look at the uh, PE, price and earnings. Where's the PE there? Price and earnings per share. Copy, paste. Okay, because that's what they're talking about. Right, so the formula that has price and earnings per share is PE. Right, so we've got two companies. Um, number one, number two. Okay, so what did they say here? They say J, okay, well I should just put J and B. Let's just put J and B here. Okay, so J and B each recently report on the same EPS. So what is EPS again? Earnings per share. Okay. Okay, so same EPS, do they tell you what it is? No. They don't. So let's just make up one. 20 or 2 even. doesn't matter. Whatever it is. But it must be the same. Okay? Same EPS. <coughs> However, J's ordinary shares trade at a higher oh, price. Too. So price for J so it could be five is and higher. Four. Yeah, it could be 5 and 4. Right, so... The PE would be equal to the price divided by the earnings. Okay, and I would do that for this one. Okay, so J has a higher price earnings than B. Okay, J must be riskier. No, no J must have no. no. J must have a higher price earnings there. Yes. Four. Right, 18, uh, G had a profit after tax. When you see profit after tax, you need to write down this. Okay, EBIT less interest gives you EBT. Less tax gives you profit for the year. Profit after tax. Okay, that's your accounting. Right, why? What's EBIT again? Earnings before interest and tax. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, that was on the same, you had to work it out Same in the, yeah, yeah, it was also in the um, assignment. So if you had to go back and redo one of the assignments, we also looked yeah. at this. Okay, you need to have that as part of the working. Okay, what did they give me in the question? Profit after tax, 79950. And the preference share dividends of 15. 15. So pref share dividends. If the 
company generated 10,000 ordinary shares issued. Okay, so... Ten thousand shares issued. Okay, what is the EPS earnings per share? Right, so as soon as you see that, you need to write down oh I don't have the EPS, let's get it. Okay, earnings per share. There's the formula. They want you to work out earnings per share. Yeah. Right, do I have everything? Profit for the year? I've actually got it, yeah. So EPS equals open brackets, profit for the year, 79950 minus the preference share dividend. What is the preference share dividend? 15,000. 15, Close brackets divided by the number of ordinary 10, shares. 10,000. Yeah, that's all you needed to do. Okay, so easy working here. No need to do too many steps. Yeah. 6 comma 49, so it'll be 50. Yeah. If you round it off. Option three. three. Right, number 19. What is the company's market to book ratio? As soon as I see that, I need to write down the formula. Market to book ratio, there's the right formula. Remember with market to book, you need the market price and you need the book value. Okay, so there's the book value. So you actually need to write down both formulas. Okay. Right, so when you study this, just remember, make a mental note of your market and book value. They have to go together. Okay, that's why they're on the same slide. Okay, copy, paste. Right, so if I want market to book, I need the book value in order to work out the market to okay. book. Right, let's go see what we have been given. Okay, D plumbing reports. Market price per share, 63. Where's market price per share? There. Okay, so M slash B equals market price, 63. Divide by book value. Okay, total equity. There's total equity. So, book value equals, what is total equity? 19,418. 19,418. 19, okay, is there a preference share dividend here? No, there no, isn't. So, it's I minus zero. Yeah. Okay, number of ordinary shares, 500. So divided by 500. See, number of ordinary yeah. shares. Okay, so I just reread the question and I find the missing figures. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so this one is also quite an easy one. Copy paste. Right, so what is the book value? 38.836. Yes. Sixty-three divided by thirty-eight point eight three six. One point six two two. Option four. Okay. So we just I just need to know these formulas. Of the yes. Okay, but the technique is important. Yeah. Okay, so for next week. Um, obviously, once we've done one pass paper, then you've got a week to do another pass paper. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing October, November 2018 with you, so you can see how to do it. Okay, so then um, when you do uh, May, June 2018, okay, yeah. but you will do it. So you'll, yeah. uh, you'll just find two hours during the week yeah. um, to sit down with the paper and try to do it. If you want to, do it with your formulas just to practice. That's yeah. fine. Um, you can study the formulas later on when you're getting close to the exam. Yeah. Okay, but um, I need you to practice now because we've covered all the theory. It's just a matter yeah. of doing questions. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't sent you the previous ones yet. Okay, I, I will do it this week. Um, I'll upload this one and then I'll send you that video and then any other ones that I have from previous past papers. Um, then you'll have that as well as all the answers. Okay, so then you can go back and you can look at 2016, yeah. 2015, 2013, 2014. You can look at all those different past papers and you can just do questions. Yeah. Okay, then you've just got to do as many as of them as you can. Yeah. Okay, we still have four weeks, so I'll be able to do four with you, um, but you need to do a bit more. Yeah, no. Okay, doing four is not enough. Okay, if you can do more, you will do well. Okay. Yeah. Right, theory. What is the generally accepted relationship between risk and return? Okay, this one I want you to answer. Risk 
and return, right? Yeah. What does it look like? It goes like that. Like that? Yeah. Okay, so which one do you agree with? Lower risk, lower return? No. Is that correct? No. Higher risk, lower return? No. Lower risk, higher return? Lower risk, hi no. That's higher risk, higher return. Um, four. Yes. Okay. Number one could also be right, because if it's low risk, you'd have a low return. Yeah. See, low here, low there. High there, high there. Yeah. Right, so one and four are actually correct. Okay. But if we're looking at this, risk and return, if you take on more risk, you want more return. Okay. So this would be more correct. If that makes sense. Okay. So I would choose four over one. Yeah. Okay, an investment that is made for 1.5 two years ago has in the meantime increased in value to that and has delivered that with a dividend over the two years. What is the return investment? So okay, so it's just the, the return. The, so the first amount is the um, PV. Yeah. The second amount is the FE. That's that, the dividend, yeah. the return, the payment. Okay, so this one is the formula. Right, so you've got the present value, the future value, plus the return, the dividends. Okay, it's what you receive, it's the return over what you invested, the cost. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so uh, brackets. 1.7 1 plus 1700000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, plus, well, it's 40 or 400. 40. Mm, it's 1.5, don't we have to do 1.5? One 1.5 one is the investment. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. okay. Divide by one five. Yeah. Right. So type that into the calculator. Copy. Paste. One point one six. So sixteen percent. Okay. Okay. Sixteen percent. Yeah. Option. One. One. Okay. Uh, a company has the opportunity to invest one of the funding two investments. Okay, so they can either invest in this one or that one. What is the return? What is the range? Okay, range of return. So range, highest, minus, lowest. That's how you get a range. Yeah. Okay, so what's the high here? 17. What's the low? 5. Yeah. The range is 12. 9, 17. The range is 8. Do you agree? Yeah. What is the range of return for investment P? Parker, where's Parker? So There's Parker. Three, so it's four. It's, no, the range. Twelve. Yeah, so the answer is four. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, thought you were, no, no. I thought you were choosing four. No, no, no. Okay, but it's number yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's the right one. Twelve percent, yeah. option four. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't see that there okay. was a four there as well. Okay, so range, just, let's just revise. That's all it is. It's yeah. a measure of risk. It's a basic statistical yeah. measure of risk. Which is the best measure of risk for a single asset held in isolation? And which is the best measure for an asset held in a diversified portfolio? Okay. Isolation means we, we hold that asset on its own. Okay. If it's in a diversified portfolio, we have many uh, assets. Okay. So when you have many assets, you want to use the correlation coefficient. Okay. So that, that's right for the diversified portfolio. Variance of standard deviation, if I'm looking at a single asset, I'd be looking at the standard deviation because that's the risk. Okay, remember, standard deviation is the measure of risk. Option four. That's just theory. Okay, okay what is the investment's expected return if we have those returns? Okay, if it's expected, I don't do the whole table. So I only do... The first yeah. column. So expected value calculation. That's all I want. Yeah. It's this times, times that, that gives you gives that. you that answer. Yep. Okay, so let's just do that. Probability and the return. Okay, the probability 30, 30. 50, 20. 30, 50, 20. So okay, return, remember you use yeah. percentages, uh, decimals. 20. 12, 12 and 2. And two. So it's opposite, yeah. Okay. 
the EV calculation, okay. which we need to know Probably because it comes from, from the table. The term, yeah. Exactly, it's this times that. Okay, you do that for those three. Then you sum up. up. And then you look for that answer. Okay, 12.4%, option three. Okay, you don't do the whole table. Yeah, no, you I do don't. what you need. Okay, 25. You have invested 8,000 in share S with the beats of that. There's a clue. See, we're thinking about what? Cap M. Exactly. Good. Right. So when you see Cap M, you write down the formula. Required return is risk-free plus beta times the market, market minus, minus the, the risk-free. Risk okay. So what do they want us to work out here? Um, they gave us the beta. Uh, they gave us this, which is the value. Um, with a beta of 0 0.8. Oh, okay, so this is not quite cap M because they've got two different portfolios. Okay. What is the beta of the portfolio? Right, so portfolio means a portion of the one and a portion of the other. Okay. So you've invested 8,000. So you, do you have to times it, basically? Uh, I'll show you. Okay. Let's just write down the information. 8,000 invested in S with a beta of how much? 1.4. Okay, 1.4. Um, 12,000 in B in T with the beta of 0 0.8. Okay, so the total will be what? 20,000. Okay. Do you agree? Yes. But this 20,000 is representing a percentage of this one and, that one and a percentage of that one. So the beta of the portfolio is going to be calculated as... 1.4 times the percentage, 8,000 of the 20,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, plus the other share, beta, which is 0 0.8, times 12,000 divided by 20,000. 20, it's just a weighting. Yeah. Okay, so let's work that out on the calculator. 1.04. Okay, 26. The expected return on a share with the beta of that is 15%. Expected return. The expected risk-free of 3%. What should the market risk premium be? So this is capital. Okay, so yes. Market risk premium. Market risk premium is looking at what? We need to go back. To, do you have a textbook close by? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah. let's just double check um, uh, this. Um, it, uh, that's the right formula. Okay, I just want to remember um, uh, beta times the market, beta times the market minus the risk free, okay, is what? And then brackets, the market minus the risk free is what? Okay, let's just check that. Okay, so this would be the cap M. Risk premium three twenty five. Okay, so on page three twenty five, um, here they say. Okay, the 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 market return minus the risk free. So this one yeah. is called the the. RM minus RF portion of the risk premium is called the market risk premium. Okay, so that's called the market risk premium. Page 325 in the textbook. Okay, this is called the risk premium. Okay. Page 325 in the textbook. Okay, so when you've got the beta times the bracket, it's the risk premium. When you've got just the bracket, it's the market risk premium. Okay, thank you. That's all we needed. Okay, so what did the question ask for here? Market risk premium. So what do they want? They want that one. Okay. Okay, market minus risk free. The expected return on a share with the beta of that is 15%. If the expected risk free is 3%. 
So the expected risk-free is 3%. So we need to do a little work in here. Okay, so expected return. This, I think, could have been a typo. I think that should be required return. Okay. Because then you have to use cap M. Yeah. Okay, because you've got beta here, and you've got 15%. Yeah. All right, so 15% will equal the 3%, okay, plus... What is beta? 1.5 times the market return minus the 3%. Close brackets. Okay, so then we can work that out. So, uh, 15 minus 3 is 12%. Equals 1.5 times M is 1.5M. Yeah, minus 3. No, minus 1.5 times 3, oh, which okay, is 4.5%. Okay, then take the 4.5 across, which is 16%. Isn't it 16.5? Uh, yes, you're right. 16.5% equals 1.5M. And then you have to divide. Solve for M, yes. Okay. Do one side, you do two so 16.5 divided by 1.5 gives you 11. Okay, 3. Makes sense. Yes, it does. Oh, hold on. It's not three. Why? Mm -hmm. Three, this is the market return. Not the risk premium. Not the risk premium, exactly. Copy paste. Almost got caught. Okay. Eleven minus three equals eight. Okay, that's the right answer. Okay. Trick trick question. Okay, because they asked for that. Yeah. They said what is the market risk premium? So it's the market return minus, minus the risk okay. fee. So it must be eight. Okay, so it's actually two, not three. Okay, got that. Yes. Okay. All right, 27. Uh, M Limited preference share pays that annual dividend. What is the maximum price that you're willing to pay for the share today if your required rate of return is that? Okay, that's Gordon Growth with no growth. Div 1 over R minus G. Okay. Okay, the dividend is 7.5%, 7.5 divided by the rate, which is 0.0975, no growth. Okay. Do you agree? Okay, yeah. Okay, let's put that in. PV equals, uh, what is it, 7.5% divided by 0 0.0975. <coughs> 76.92 yes, option, option 3 okay M has that amount in assets that amount in equity okay so A and E okay, okay remember when I have A and E I can work out L do yeah, you agree yeah. okay because A equals owner's equity plus liabilities keep that in the back of your mind okay I'm just See, I'm, this yeah. is the exam technique. Okay, it has 50, 000, uh, 50 million ordinary shares outstanding. What is the company's book value? There's okay. that's the important bit. As soon as you see that, write down the formula. We had book value before. I'm just going to copy it from there. Okay, so in the question, I read book value. Yeah. Total equity minus preference share capital. All right. So book value equals. Do I have the total equity? Yes. The total equity is. 936 million. Yeah. Minus preference share capital. Did they give you any preference share capital? No. no. Divided by? Number of ordinary shares. Yes. Did they give you that? I think they did. Yes. 50 million. 50 million. Okay, so that's all you needed actually. Copy. 80.72 Yes 2, two. These ratios actually aren't too bad I've seen no, worse yeah, in other past papers I just need to know them Yeah oh. Okay, theory Which one of the funny statements about the difference between ordinary shares and preference shares is correct? Preference shareholders Preference shareholders are referred to as residual owners No, residual refers to the ordinary That's wrong Ordinary shareholders are given preference over preference. No, it's the other okay. way around. 
the claims of preference shareholders must be satisfied before the board of directors declares any dividends payable to ordinary shareholders. That looks good. Preference shares are super voting shares. No, they no. sometimes they don't even have voting rights. Whilst ordinary shares are non-voting. Non-voting is really wrong. Yeah. Okay, they have voting rights. Three. Easy. Not too bad. Okay, 30. O pays an annual dividend that is expected to increase. There's the giveaway. Yeah. Gordon growth. PV equals div Good. 1 uh, over R, R minus G. G. The share commands a market return of that. That's the R. Sells for that. That's the PV. Okay. Okay. That's the increase. That's the G. What is the expected amount of the next dividend? We need to work out the div 1. Okay. See that? Yeah. Okay. So, let's write down the formula. PV 28.90 equals div 1. I don't know. Yeah. Divided by open brackets R minus G 16% minus 5% Do you agree? Yes I do Okay That works out to 0.15 do, uh, 11 Do you agree? Yeah 16 minus 5 is 11 Take the 11 across 28.390 times 0.11 Equals div 1 Do you agree? Yes I do Okay so div 1 equals 2.89 to 28.9 times 0 0.11 3.1 3.183 got that yeah okay number three, 31 the real interest the real rate of interest is 4% Okay, here's the real rates. That's actually economics. Okay, remember, real yeah. relates to inflation. There's the inflation is expected over the next three years at 4%. A three-year treasury yields 8.4. What is the maturity risk, risk premium. premium for the three-year security? Okay, so you've got the real, you've got the inflation, and you've got the security interest rate. So... Um, you're not working out the real return. They just okay. want the maturity risk premium. So it'll be 8.4% minus the real rate of interest. Uh, and inflation is expected to be 4%. Oh, it's both 4%. Uh, let's just check this one, actually, because this is something different. Maturity risk premium. It's so big. <laughs> yeah, let's just go to the back index. Maturity risk premium. Maturity. M A T. Maturity. No risk premium. Just maturity. Okay, so maturity. Page 234. Page 234. This is valuation of securities. Yeah, this is bond calculations. Okay, 234. Maturity risk premium. Um, that's the required return. No maturity risk premium here. Okay, let's check the next page. 260, page 260, this is looking at ordinary shares, no, no maturity risk premium here, 628, 628, 628, okay, this is floating rate securities, that's not there, and the other one, uh, 629, same thing. Okay, this is not there, so we'll have to Google it. Okay. Can you Google it on your phone, Craig, while, while you've got that? Yeah. Okay, to me, this would be 4.4 if, if it's maturity risk premium for the three-year security. Um, you're looking at the maturity, which is over three years, so it's definitely 8.4%. The inflation is 4.0% and the real rate of interest is 4%. So the nominal... The nominal would be real plus inflation. So it'll be 4 plus 4. Uh, so it might be option 1, but let's okay. just check. What am I Googling? Uh, just maturity risk premium formula. Maturity risk premium formula. Yeah, this is different. It's not in the textbook. So we're going to have to search for it and check what the formula is. I think it's, uh, I think it's option 1, but we'll, let's just check. What does it say? The, to figure out the maturity risk premium for your investment, you'll start by identifying the bond you wish to purchase and the maturity date. 
let's say the current yield one year is that and the current yield in 10 year is that um go, go to invest in equity risk premium no, that's equity risk premium maturity risk Which premium to that one? um interest rate risk maturity risk premium let's just say maturity risk premium um uh can we back there and then just put uh investopedia there we go okay let's stick that one okay that'll give a better working for it if that is see they don't even give it yeah. they give this maturity risk premium ex the extra rate okay let's look at that it's there but it's given as part of a discussion okay so um maturity risk premium where's the word maturity risk premium Okay, so according to Investopedia, maturity risk premium, the greater price stability of longer term securities, okay, so complement more risk, um, this extra rate of return is called maturity risk premium along with other premium. Okay, so it's the expectation over long term, so typically higher on short term rates, it's the extra, okay, so they're defining it as the extra rate of return that you're generating. So this is on longer term securities, okay, okay based on the current rate so the rate that you're receiving which is the nominal so it is right okay so nominal okay so we need to remember what nominal is yeah. okay so nominal rate nominal equals real plus inflation do you agree yeah okay so nominal equals four percent plus four percent here which is eight percent okay so the market um risk premium maturity risk premium is equal to the 8.4 percent minus the 8 percent nominal which is 0.4 percent okay so the maturity risk premium would be number one okay so it was correct okay all right 32 uh, more time value of money here but looking at bonds Okay, so R limited issues a bond five years ago. Five years ago, there's your N. At a par value. Par value represents what formula? The F V. Okay. Okay, because that's par value. Another name for Yeah, par value F V. Remember we look at bonds now. Yeah. The investors receive a yearly interest payment of that. What is that? The coupon. The market interest rate five years ago was that. That was five years ago, and the bond matures in 15 years' time. What is the current value of the bond? Okay, so we're looking at the current value of the bond, so we need to insert the, uh, we need to solve for the PV, question mark, and we need to use the market rate. Uh, we don't have a current market rate, so we'll have to use that one. Okay. All right, so that would be the I. Okay, so let's put all those values in. N equals um, five years ago. Okay, that was five years ago. So, so five six. years ago. Wouldn't it be on your six year? What is the current value of the bond? Um, so current value of the bond. We need to draw a picture actually just to see what's okay. happening here. Okay, so T zero, T minus five. Okay, so issued a bond five years ago at a par value of 1000 so five years ago and the bond is how many years 15 years okay so this will be t10 yeah. okay that's not too bad okay so five years ago you issued a bond does it make sense okay looking at the current value this is the current value pv equals question mark that's what you're working out okay so how many years left do we have of the bond 10 years okay so n is 10 years remaining okay the i was 15 13.5 percent okay the pmt was given as 1500 yeah. the face value or par value 10, was given as 10,000. solve for pv 
Okay, let's see what we get. So basically, you the rates, the CMPD. Yeah, the normal. Well, yeah. yeah, but it's just ten years. Yeah. Okay, the payment. Uh, let's make it plus. So everything is plus, and the ten thousand. Close brackets. Okay, ten seven one. Uh, ten seven nine seven. Uh, not an option here. Let's just read it. It's yearly interest. That's fine. Um, the bond matures in fifteen years time. Okay. Yes. Um, l let me just ask you for your interpretation. Okay. Matures in fifteen years time. Was that when we bought it or from now? It could be from. It could now. be from now. All right. Let's try. Okay, so this is what we did initially, and we didn't get an answer. Yeah. Okay, so let's assume it's from now. So we issue the bond, and it's 15 years from now. Okay, so 15 years from now, so the only thing we need to change is this. So we really should reword things properly. Yeah, so sometimes the wording's not so great, but let's just check what we get, if we get an answer that's there. Let's make it 15. 10.944, that's there. Yeah. Okay, so that they... So they need a new word. That's what they basically meant. Okay, 15 years from now. now. Okay, so the bond was actually 20 years long. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, so it's minus so five years five, ago, yeah. plus five. It's actually T20. Okay, so they want T20. So it's a 20-year bond, but it's 15 years from today. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay, that's the answer. Option four. They should reword things properly. Um, yeah, uh, maybe they're trying to like trick yeah. the students by wording it funny, so you have to think about it. Okay, right. Uh, Jay issued a seven year bond three years ago. Okay, so she issued a seven year bond three years ago. T minus three, T zero, and it was a seven year bond, so it would be T four. Seven year Hello? bond. Yeah. Yeah. I'll s can I phone you a little bit later? I'm just in a lecture, Dad. But they think they think he got stung by a bee. But I'll. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Bye. Semi annual payments. Okay. So we're looking at um, a seven year bond three years ago at a coupon rate of ten percent. Okay. So the PMT is ten percent of par. If the face value, right? What is the face value? They give it to us. No, we don't. Okay, the bonds make semi annual payments. These bonds currently sell for 98% of par. Okay, that helps us because it's 98% of whatever the par is. Yeah, okay, so if the par is 100, it will be 98. Yeah, okay, so we could put that in. So if PV is 98, future value would be 100 based on what they've told us. Okay. What is the yield to maturity? So solve for I. Okay. okay. Uh, remember, it's a semi-annual so bond, divide so by divide by two. two. Correct. Two. Okay. So 10% times 100 divided by two equals 10%. 10 divided by 100 times um, uh, oh, 10%. 0.10 times 100 divided by 2 gives us 5. Okay, so we've got everything. Yeah. Solve for the rate. Okay, so the rate is going to be the N here. Um, what is the N here? 7. What is the yield to maturity? Yeah, 7 year bond. Okay, so 7. Oh, but it's 7 years. So 7 times 2 is 14 yeah. half years. Okay, the payment, 5. The PV, we're solving for it. 98. No, we have it. Minus 98. The FV, FV 100. Close brackets, solved. Okay, that's 5%. But remember, that's for I2. So you have to do times by 2. Oh, okay. So you get the yield to maturity. Okay, so that times 2 gives us 10.4%. For 1. Yeah. That 1. Okay, obviously... Let's just write it, it down. Times by, times by 100. Okay, and then round it off. Yeah. So 4 1 is correct. 3. Okay, 34. Okay, we're still doing good. Yeah. 
Okay, so Paul wants to invest in a bond with a par value, which is future, future value. value yeah. The price of the bond, PV, pays PMT. Yeah. 4,5% of the... 4.85. 4.85, yeah. Uh, ooh, 8.5, not 5.8. Yeah. yeah, okay, I'll yeah. write it down no, correctly I'm here. Okay, so PMT is 4.85% yeah. of par. What is par? Par is 1,000. One yeah. Okay, so let's see what we get there. Future value, 1,000. Present value... Given in the question, one one seven five. Okay, the current market rate in the bond is seven point six percent. So is that the I? Yes, seven point six percent. Okay, is this semi annual though? No. Nothing says Nothing. semi annual, no. so we can assume How annual. Is, uh, so solve for n. Make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so we need to work this out. Okay, let's put all of that in. Okay, so the periods, what is the ratio? 7.6%. Yes. What is the PMT? Uh, it's 4.85. 4, 4, yeah. The PV? It's 1175. Minus 1175. And the FV? 1000. Close brackets equals. Okay, the time? Uh, 5.39. Yep. It's option 3. Yes. How much time left to maturity? 5.38. Okay, more theory. If a bond is worth 1,000 at maturity, future value, and it's currently selling for present value, then it's a, the bond is selling at par. Do you agree? Yeah. So the coupon rate... It's equals the yield to maturity. Yeah, it's not one. Okay, remember we had a note. We had a note about this in your book. Uh, I want to show it to you. Uh, bonds was five. Let's just open that. It's fine. It's the word. It's the PDF. Okay, so remember we had a, a, a table and we had par value, um, and it was coup uh, if coupon is more than the yield, then it was. Um, if coupon was more than yield, then it was a premium bond. Okay, I want to show that to you. Where is it? There. Okay, see? If coupon is more than the discount, it's premium. Yeah. That's what we just said. If the coupon is less than the discount, then it's discount. discount. If it's equal, par value. Par value. Okay, so coupon equals the discount. Well, it's definitely not one. Uh, not where is it? Oh, sorry. It's the PDF, so just close that. Okay, coupon rate is more than the yield? No. no. The yield to maturity is more than a coupon? No. no. The yield to maturity and the coupon are the same? Four. Yes. Option four. See, it's theory. Yeah. Okay, bond is selling for that. If it's selling for that, it's the PV. Yeah. Par value of the bond? FV. Yeah. With 16 years left that's to in. maturity in. The interest on the bond is paid every three months, so that's quarterly. Yeah. The yield to maturity, 12%, so which is I4, which is 12, 12 divided by yeah. 4. What it is, is the coupon rate? So we're solving for the payments. Good. Okay, let's write out all that stuff. Future value? It's 1,000. Present value? It is 845. I4 was 12% divided, divided by, by 4, which is 3% per quarter. Do you agree? Yes. Yield to maturity 12%, and it's paid every three months. Every three months is four times a year, which yeah. is right. Then okay, 16, 16 times years. four. Yes. PMT, what is it going to be? What is the rate? 3%, eh? Yeah. Okay, let's show it. 0.1 divided by, oh, not divide. Yeah, divide. 
Yeah, it is divided. Four close brackets. Okay, the N, 64 quarters. Yeah. The PV, yeah, it's eight four minus five. 845. <laughs> FV is FV 1000. FV, 1000. Sold. Okay, there's the payment. Right, but remember, the payment equals the coupon rate times the face value. So, 24.52 equals rate times the 1000. Do you agree? Solve for the rate. Oh, divide by 2. Divide by 4. Okay, divide by 4. Because this was quarterly. Do you agree? This is per quarter. Okay. Right, so I'm using the formula okay. for payment. Okay. Okay, remember, to get the payment, how do I get the payment? I take the coupon rate and I multiply it by the face value. Okay. If it's quarterly, I divide by 4. Okay, so we need to put that in as well. Okay, so let's put another step here. 24.52 times 4 equals 1,000 rates. Okay, so 25.24.52 times 4 is that? Equals 1,000. Okay, then just divide. Okay, so this divided by 1,000 is that? Okay, so 9.808%. Do you agree? Then can you times it by 100? No, there's it. No, but then you can times it by 100. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's times it by 100 just to show it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay, yeah. and then it's 9.81. Yeah. yeah. Option 4. Do you agree? Yes, it is. Okay, so this one required that formula to work out bonds. T invested in purchasing a zero coupon bond. Zero coupon means payment is zero. Yeah. No coupon. Par value is the FV. E. And the maturity is H's, That's which is the N. N. The yield to maturity R, is so I. So we need the PV. Exactly. Easy, hey? Yeah. Okay. 37. PMT? Zero. Zero. We don't even have to put it, but I'm just putting it just for... FB um, is a thousand. A thousand, yeah. The N is eight. N is eight. The I is seven. Seven percent. This is... It's not quite uh, Yeah, anything. so we don't have to worry about it, yeah. And then the PV we have to solve. Seven percent. Eight. No payment. Five eight two. Yes, option two. Okay, B has just discovered a bond currently for that. So that's PV. PV. Par value of the bond is F E. The so yield is I. The time to maturity in. So what the is the future coupon value payment? is less than the Value. Well, then that's a premium bond. Okay. That's all. Okay, okay. bonds can be trading at a premium yeah. or a discount. Yeah. Okay, so well, if the same. price is more, then it's a premium bond. Okay. Okay, so future value. have anything here yeah. yeah okay what is the coupon payment of the bond so same thing applies so that's the PMT we need to solve yes do they want the payment or the rate they want the payment good so we don't have to work on anything to solve this on the calculator okay rate 10% in 13, 13. PV is minus 1123 one, one, two, and then a thousand okay one one seven there. Option two. two, three. Okay, last two questions and then we're done with the multiple choice. Which type of financing decision will a financial manager rely more heavily on when faced with a down sloping yield curve? Okay, so higher rates here, lower rates there in the future. That's long term, that's short term. Okay. Cheaper short term financing 
false. Cheaper long-term financing? True. More expensive short-term financing? That's true. More expensive long-term financing? That's false. Okay, so which type of financing decision will a financial manager rely more heavily on when faced with the downward sloping? So cheaper long-term financing? That's true. More expensive short-term financing? That's also true. So I would two say and two. three. So they said which one would they rely on? more heavily I'd okay so two. if they're relying more heavily on cheaper. they would choose the cheaper financing over the long yeah. yes okay so then two you could say is more correct yeah okay but they're both correct yeah based on the diagram yeah okay which of the funny statements is or are correct regarding the market segmentation theory of the term structure that's bond theory okay, okay the interest rates on uh, for bonds are, are, are of one maturity determined by the supply and demand. Okay, it's a supply and demand and it's market segmentation. Okay. Market segmentation, um, supply and demand was for a different one, I think. But let's just check it. Um, let's go back to the notes. Okay, okay we had there. Uh, the market segmentation was supply and demand. Yeah, so that was fine then. Uh, oh no, it is this one. This is that. Okay, so the yeah, interest rate for bonds is determined by supply and demand, yes. Okay, according to market segmentation. Yeah. Bonds of one maturity are not substitutes for bonds of other maturities. Therefore, interest rates on bonds different do not move. No, okay, maturity. Maturity is looking at the um, uh, this one. Oh, that. The liquidity preference. Okay, there was only those two. There might be another one in the textbook, but we'll check it just now. I don't think that's true. Investors, strong preference for short term relative to long term explains why yield curves are down. Okay, so that's liquidity preference. Liquidity preference. Okay, so I'll be looking at A and B here, but let's just check it. Okay. Let's just check the textbook just to make 100% sure that we have the right option. Okay, so market segmentation. Let's go look for it. Okay, market segmentation theory. Page 223. Okay, so you go to page 223, and then you'll just reread this bit here. Uh, let's just put a reference for it. Okay. The theory suggests that the market for loans is segmented on the basis of maturity, and that the supply and demand for loans within each segment is determined at the prevailing interest rates. Uh, it's defined by the relationship between the prevailing rates and the market segment. Yeah, it's true. It's correct. All right, so it's the maturity and the supply and demand, okay. A and B, option four. Okay. So it was right. Okay, question 40, option four. Oh, sorry, wrong reference. Delete. Uh, two was, yeah, that's yeah. something different. Okay, this was question 40. Perfect, thanks. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so we've done all the multiple choice. Save. You've actually passed the exam. Yeah. Okay, 40 divided by 70, you've got 57%. But I want a lot higher than... Of course you do. But that's still kay. a pass. <laughs> but that's still a pass. But remember, you shouldn't be spending more than an hour on that. Uh, so it took us a bit longer because of working yeah. and explanation in that. But um, we still have half an hour now to do the long questions. Okay, so written questions. Okay, so you'll see the written questions are actually not so bad because they require you to identify things. Okay, so let's look at the first one. 20 marks for the first question. Uh, what do they have here? Um, investment opportunity, downloaded the annual reports. Okay, yeah. so this is accounting. It's yeah. probably a ratio question. They've given us that. They've given us that. And they've given us a table. Use the financial statements above and calculate the funding ratios. Mm. That's easy. Okay, 12 marks. And you're looking at all of these, but okay. you're looking at the 2017 year. Okay. Okay. Mm. And you've got a lot, eh? <laughs> okay. So let's write them all down. Uh, I'm I'm not going to write the, the other column. I'm just going to write 2017. Okay. I'm going to copy paste the formulas. Okay. So we need current ratio. Looks like they asked all the ratios here last mm. year. I think okay. ratios is a big part. Yes. Okay. So let's just copy them all down. Unfortunately. Okay, so there's the first one. Quick. Quick yeah. inventory turnover, total asset turnover. Quick. Inventory turnover.
energy turnover. Oh, it's even going in the right order, looks yeah. like. A total asset turnover. Again, a total asset turnover is on a different page. Where's our total asset turnover? There's our total asset turnover. Uh, debt ratio times interest earned. Debt ratio times interest earned. Debt ratio. So it actually is going in order. Kind of, yeah. yeah. In in the textbook. Yeah. Times interest earned. Uh, gross profit, operating profit, net profit. Okay, so all the profit ones. just study and write down the formulas and then do the workings what else return on assets return on equity okay so they didn't ask all because yeah. market to book all of that didn't come up here eh? maybe they'll say who knows, but um, they tested it in the multiple choice, I guess. And that's yeah. why I wouldn't get so many of these things, hey? Okay, and that's it, eh? Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's just go and get the figures. All right, so... And this will take up a lot of time, though, in the exam. Um, yeah, but it won't take up too much now because we can do it yeah. here. Current assets. Do they give us current assets? Three, nine... Three nine eight seven two zero zero zero. Yeah, I want to shrink it a bit so I can see everything, and then we can do okay. it quicker. This is when a printed copy would have helped. Okay, well, because yeah. then we could just look at it, but it's fine. This still works. So three nine eight seven two zero zero zero. Okay, let's do it this way. It'll go quicker. Okay, there we go. Right, let's shrink this a bit. You can still see that, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Alright, current assets. 39872000. Divide by 23772000 equals. Okay, so that's all you have to do. 2 1. Okay, next one. So we have to put 2 2 1. For the ratio. Yes, because okay. it's 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 assets to liabilities. Okay. Okay. Right. So paste this. Let's just change the formula. Quick ratio is going to be the current assets which I've already got from the previous formula, and Minus just subtract in the inventory, which is one two zero oh, four eight zero zero zero. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. Then you type that into your calculator. <coughs> That one's done. Inventory turnover ratio. Cost of goods sold. ITR equals cost of goods sold. We'll find that just now. Divided by, we've, well, we've got the inventory, inventory here. Let's write it down. Sold. One, two, oh, four, eight, zero, zero. Let's get the cost of sales. There's the cost of sales. 66. 66. One, two, seven, zero, zero, zero. Okay, copy. I T R equals. Oh. Are they building in your house? Mm -mm. Is that the neighbor? Am I? Okay. I don't even know uh, building was going on. Okay. No, I didn't know it was okay. going on oh. in this area. Okay, yeah. So that's the five, four, eight, eight, so six, two, two times. Ones. Times. Inventory turnover rate. It's the number of times you're turning over. Okay. Total asset turnover. Sales, one four two one two three four five six divided by total assets that we need. There's our total assets. Seven four one three five zero zero zero. Okay, next one. Total liability. 
liabilities over total assets. Okay, I've, I can use this formula. I can just replace the other one. Okay, so debt ratio. Total liabilities. Total liabilities. So the, this needs to change. Liabilities are total liabilities. Where's the total liabilities? <coughs> oh, we have to add it. Yeah. Okay, do you see they give it yeah. separately, hey? 9030123. Plus two three two three seven seven two one two three close brackets divided by total assets. That's the total assets. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there's the debt ratio. Forty-four percent. Okay, uh, let's carry on. Let's get this one. Okay, interest before tax over interest. We need to scroll up. Right, so EBIT. EBIT um would be over here before financing before cost so we need to put that ebit do you see that yeah okay so we need to work that out okay so tie equals brackets earnings before interest and tax so it'll be operating profit so it'll be 29 154000 zero, 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 minus the loss and sale 5096123 and then that'll give us a total. Okay, I want a total that's in between those two. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's before the financing cost, before the tax. Okay. Right, so that's the one. Close brackets, divided by the interest. How much is the interest? Financing cost. Oh, I can't see that now that I've written over it. Okay, what is it now? One eight. One eight. Three zero zero zero. Okay, that's it. Let's solve. There's the times interest earned. Okay, okay that's good. It's a big number. It's bigger than one. Right, sales minus cost of sales for gross profit. GPM equals open brackets one four two one two three four five six. Okay, less cost of sales. Oh, we can even just write down gross profit. Let's save time. Gross profit. Seven five eight seven three one two three divided by one four two and then zero 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 divided by yeah one four two one two three four five six equals okay see this is not difficult here yeah no you yeah times by hundred obviously you have to leave it as decimal okay then this one operating profits. Operating profit margin, where's my operating profit? 29, 154, 123, divide by 142, 123, 456 equals times by 100 together, percentage, yeah. obviously. I'm just leaving it as decimals. Okay, next one. Net profit margin, so that's profit for the year minus pre share dividend. They talk about a pre share dividend here anyway. Use the information. Nothing in the beginning, no. So there's nothing. All right, so then it would just be net profit margin equals profit for the year, 4035123, divided by sales, 1421234567 equals. And do we have to, what do we have to round up to when we're putting in the answers? Um, or they, they should say, I don't think okay. they say in the exam though, hey? No. So then just maybe just two. just leave it as that even, or just do two, and then okay. just say two decimals. So if you round it off to two, then just say two decimal place. Okay. Okay, if you do round it off. All right, or just write down the answer, I guess. Okay. Okay. All right, ROA, last two. Okay, so ROA, profit for the year, brackets. Okay, there's no dividend, so I don't have to put a bracket. 4035123 divided by... Total assets. Seven four one three five zero zero zero. Okay, good. Equals. That and then times by hundred to get a percentage, obviously. Okay, these are small, so let's do that. Okay, percent. Right, and then the last one. ROE, same thing again. Uh, let's just copy this actually. 
Okay, so it's the profit for the year divided by the equity. Okay, so what is the equity here? 4, 1, 4, 3, 1, 3, 3. Yeah. Okay, gives us a return on equity. No preference shares, obviously. Times 100. But don't we have to say divide by total equity? Yeah, we did. Okay. Oh, there's no pre Oh, sorry. There's Profit no for the yeah, year divided no by total equity. No preference shares. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. Right, so you've got all the marks here. That's 12 marks for doing that. Yeah. Then you've got a comment. Compare the 2017 values of B with those of the previous year and highlight the positive and negative changes that occurred during the year under the following headings. Liquidity. Okay, so... Which are your, liqui your, uh, your liquidity ratios? Current ratio is liquidity. Do you agree? Yeah. As a test, quick ratio... Is liquidity. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, let's go get the others. Just to see. Current ratio, we had those two. Uh, inventory turnover, that's activity. That's it. Okay, so liquidity, those two you'll discuss. Okay. Okay, so let's go and look. Okay. What were our... Quick ratio, 1.7. Has it gone up or down? It's, Went up? it's gone down. 2016 was higher than 2017. Oh, 1.1, 1. 1, sorry. Yeah, okay. I thought it said 1.7. And then this one is 1.67. 1. That's it gone up. up by okay. Right by a bit. Okay, so yeah. let's just write that down. Right, so current ratio increased a little bit. Okay, greater liquidity overall. Okay, but the quick ratio decreased. Yeah. More reliance on inventory for liquidity this year than last. Okay, last year they didn't rely on inventory as much. Okay. okay. Right, so liquidity we've done. Activity, what's the other ones? Activity, debt, profitability. It's actually all of it. Okay, activity, debt, okay, so under activity we're going to be discussing inventory turnover we had, inventory turnover and total asset turnover, that's all we had, inventory Turnover and total asset turnover. Okay, so those two we need to discuss. Okay, you can obviously write more if you have yeah. time. Okay, I'm just giving the uh, the key points um, to each of these. Okay, so let's just do the comparison quick. Okay, so inventory turnover, total asset turnover. Okay, inventory turnover, 54 times. Did it go up or down? It went up a lot. Yeah. Okay, so big improvement. Um, total asset uh, total asset turnover. One point five two, one point nine also so gone up. So both up. improved. Yeah. Okay. So activity has improved a lot. Big improvement. Slight improvement. Okay, and you could talk about that. Okay, so they're doing more this year than they've done yeah. before. Okay, the debts. Debt ratio, what do we need here? Let's just go check. Uh, debt ratios. Debt ratio times interest earned, that's it. Okay, so we had those two in this question. Debt ratio and the times interest earned. I'm just going to abbreviate that, okay? All right, so what was our debt ratio? Debt ratio, 44%. It went down. So if we times by 100, went down, hey? Okay, so that's less. So there's less debt, so it's it's more conservative. Times interest earned also went down. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have as, we don't cover our interest as much as we did before. Okay, so let's put a note there. Okay, decrease, decreased. Right, so not covering interest as good as before. 
here, so more risk. Debt ratio, uh, less debt overall, less risk. Okay. Right, and then profitability, which should be all of those three, eh? Yeah. Gross profits, GPM, OPM, NPM. Okay, let's go see. Did they improve or not? Okay, GPM, 53%. Improvement or not? Improved. Has it? Yeah. Okay. Because it's 38. 38. This one? Times 100? And improved. Also improved. Okay, you're looking, so you can just tell me. Has it improved as well? Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay, net profit margin? 2.8 decreased. Okay, so, so net profit yeah. has decreased. The rest have gone up. Okay, so gross profit. Um, our sales margins are good. Better than last year. Okay, operating profit, improvement, comma, managing costs. Good. Net profit though, finance costs or tax has increased to end up with a lower net profit margin. Okay, let's just look at the yeah. steps, that's all. Okay, and then that's it. Right, that was the end of that question for eight marks. So eight marks just to comment. Yeah. And they've given you space to answer. Right, there's the last question. It's quite and then long done. though for um for two hour paper. Yeah, you you need to work a bit quicker. Yeah. Uh so you managed to cover everything. We still have eight minutes. Okay, so eight minutes mm -hmm. to do ten marks is possible. <laughs> possible. Okay. Right. Um question one. I just want to put a heading there for the question number. Blow it up again. Okay, so the last question. Okay, assume that most African companies pay monthly dividends on their shares rather than annual dividends. Okay, so monthly dividends rather than annual mm -hmm. dividends. Expecting any unusual uh, expecting any unusual circumstances during the year, the board maintains the current dividend once a year and then pay the dividend out to shareholders in monthly installments. Okay, so this is still important. It only happens once a year, but they pay it out in monthly installments. Okay. Question 2.1. Suppose a company currently pays that annual dividend. Currently pays div zero on its shares in a single annual installment and management plans on raising its dividend by 9% per year indefinitely. That's growth. If the required return on this company is 12%, what is the current share price? It's two marks, it's Gordon Growth. Okay, so 2.1, you'd have to write down so the Gordon Growth equation. One, um, divided by R minus G. Correct. Okay, in brackets. Right, so the price equals the dividend. Dividend one we need to solve for, do you agree? Yes. Okay, so div one minus, what is the rate? The rate was 12% yeah. and it was 9% growth. So 12 minus 9. Okay, asterisk. Div 1 equals div 0 times brackets 1 plus growth. Okay, you need to add growth for one year. Okay. Okay, so what is the gro what is the dividend? 5 rand. Okay, so 5 rand times bracket 1 plus 0.09%. Okay, so the dividend that's going to grow, the first dividend that grows is 5 times 1.09 equals 5.45. Two marks. There's the answer. Okay. Okay, now suppose the company in 
expects to pay dividends per share of this, this, and that in the next three years. So that's a cash flow question. Yeah. Which you can do on your computer now. Correct. You just need to show this. Yeah. Okay, so cash flow one, 5.94. 6.47. Then 7.06. Okay, over the next three years. After three years, the dividend is expected to grow at a constant so that's rate. 8%. Ooh, okay, so we need to draw a diagram. Okay, so after three years, expect it to grow. And see, this is exactly what I'll be writing on the page. Yeah. Okay, so I would show the diagram even. Okay, growth at, what is it? 8% um, required return 12%. Okay, do you agree? Yes. Okay, so for this, I need Gordon growth. Okay, this dividend is the div one, okay. and it would be seven point oh six times one point oh eight. Okay, let's see what the dividend is. Seven point oh six times one point oh eight is that seven point six. So you only need to work out the last one. The first dividend that grows. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Div okay. one. That's in inverted commas. Div one. Okay. So now, if, now that I have div one. Gordon Gross says PV0 equals div1 divided by brackets R minus G. G. Okay, so PV0 is going to be 7.6248 divided by open brackets 0 0.12 and 0 0.06 minus 0 0.08, close brackets. Okay, so PV0 equals... Where does PV0 occur? At time? 3. 3. Okay, so then I just need to add 190.62. Yeah. Okay. What is the current price? And then I can use my calculator. I equals, can you do this in your calculator, cash flow? Because I can't do this on Excel. Um, the rate here is 12%. Okay. And then the cash, so it's going to be zero of twelve point nine four six point four seven seven point oh six plus nine point seven seven. Let me just check it first time. It's fine. Finish it. Okay, let's put this in 151.166.1352. Okay, let's just check your um, cash mode. You put in 12%, yes, and your editor, naught, 5.94, 6.47, um, and this is, uh, let's just add those two together just to check the answer. 1.06 plus 190.62 is 197.68. Yeah, you did put it in correctly. Mm. That's all right. Okay, good. Okay, okay so that's the answer. Good. How much is that out of? Eight marks, and that's Jeez. the end. Eight marks for that thing. Yes, there, rough work. Okay, so you can see that the long questions aren't so bad. You could maybe even start with them if you want to. I think I'd rather start with them and, and get then that go back and do the multiple choice. Up to you. Thirty marks for that. Forty marks for that. Yeah. Alright, and that's October, November, twenty eighteen. Okay, the yeah. most recent past paper that we've got access to. Okay, happy. Yes.